good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Mehek Rathi on behalf of the entire core committee of Asia Pacific Wiz Premote. I welcome you all to this webinar on everything you want to know about drones and related regulations. Our moderator for this session is Dr. Rajesh Sarma, Senior Lecturer, Justice and Legal Studies, RMIT University, Melbourne. He is a core committee member of Asia Pacific with Premote, and it was uh, good evening, everyone. It was his uh, vision to make it. Uh, just give me. Of Asia Pacific with Pre uh, it was his vision uh, to make it a agenda for this moat of arbitration for all and make arbitration inclusive. Our speakers for today are, is our first speaker is Ms. Joanna Wang. She's policy and regulation manager of DJI, responsible for DJI's global policy and regulation research, as well as global policy work on agricultural drone. Our second speaker is Mr. Liu Hao. Professor Liu Hao is the acting chair of uh, School of Global Governance and is an expert in air and space law and global governance. He has extensive professional experience in emerging technologies and airspace operations, such as digital economy, unmanned aviation, suborbital flight, near space operation, and commercial space. Professor Liu Hao teaches at School of Global Governance, School of Management and Economics, Beijing Institute of Technology, and Behind University. He also works as a deputy director of National Research Center of ATM Law and Standard, a think tank founded by China's State Air Traffic Control Commission. Uh, I'm uh, grateful for uh, both the speakers for taking out their time uh, to join us for this session. And over to you, Professor Rajesh, now. Thank you, Mac. Uh, we are very pleased to have our first speaker, Professor Liu Hao. And uh, you have just heard about his background and expertise. So without wasting any, any, any other minute, I just want Professor Liu Hao to start. So Professor Liu Hao, please, floor is yours. Okay, okay thank you, Rajesh. Thank you, all of our colleagues. And uh, really happy to be your subject matter expert to help you to join the uh, moot court arbitration. So uh, I, I, I heard about you wanted to get more information regarding the drone, but unfortunately in the aviation regulation, we don't have a drone in the law regulation or the, or the, or the, or the any other legal instrument. So today what I want to share with you is the UAS regulation, which means a manned aircraft regulation. So, uh, Okay, so uh, on this screen, you may see uh, the CATS, which is the first version of uh, amended aircraft. So it's a, the, the CATS, according to the law of several countries, is uh, aircraft. We also have the balloons. So this is one that uh, fly in Paris in the 18th century. So the, Aviation started with unmanned or piloted aircraft. It is not started with mandated aviation. So the first uh, aviation regulation started from uh, France. So it is a Paris Police Directive on the uh, regulation of um, launching the balloons. So uh, in the first version of the International Convention on the Civil Aviation, that which is a Paris uh, Convention, we have Article 8, paladless aircraft article already. Well, according to the current definition of International Civil Aviation Organization, the aircraft means any machine that can derive support in the atmosphere from the reaction of the air, other than the reaction of the air against the Earth's surface. So be careful with this, uh, this paragraph. Uh, you may find uh, the, uh, this definition in the Annex 7 to the Chicago Convention. Uh, if you need that uh, document, please contact uh, Rejach. I will share that uh, uh, um, Annex to all of you so that you may re make a reference to the uh, Annex to the Chicago Convention. So to be simple, aircraft is a flying machine that are deriving support from the interaction with the air, not from the Earth's service. So this is a very short uh, definition of aircraft. So based on this definition of uh, the International Civil Aviation Organization, we may find that 
all of these pictures on the screen are aircraft. They may have a different types, classification, but all of them are um, aircraft. So in the NX-7, you may find this table, which is a different classification of uh, aircraft. We have a uh, rose aircraft are lighter than the air. We have a rose aircraft are heavier than the air. And based on whether they are power driven, we also have uh, 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 even detailed classification. So you may check this uh, table later. And to know more, I will show you some of uh, the pictures of different types of uh, aircraft. This is a uh, uh, the airplane you are familiar with. We fly with the rows of airplanes. So um, this is Antonov, and okay, uh, it's a, it's a it's a show of pictures of uh, different types of uh, aircraft. So um, just like you to have a general idea of a different types uh, of aircraft. So airships is also one subcategory of aircraft. They may be rigid. They may be uh, uh, tethered, or they may be uh, they may be uh, free, so that they could fly in the air. We lost the contact. Uh, sir is still there. I think there is some network issue on his part. Uh, sir, you're on mute. Okay, so let me connect switch to another. Um, okay, let, let's try whether it works well or not. Uh, it seems okay. So far, it was working well. Yes, technical uh, challenge are everywhere. Okay, so the gliders is uh, also uh, uh, one category of uh, aircraft. So also retopters, captive balloons, uh, free balloons, helicopters. So we may have some uh, uh, aircraft. They are not, they are, the shape is quite uh, strange, but, but they are still the aircraft according to the definition of ICAO. But be careful, I had mentioned this is a definition of ICAO. This is not a definition in the Chicago Convention. In the Chicago Convention, you cannot find the definition of aircraft. So uh, this is, uh, I, I just want to show you again, the aircraft, the types, uh, different types of aircraft. Uh, okay, so you may be familiar when we talk about the drones. Uh, you may be familiar with the DJI products. The even bigger uh, uh, amended aircraft, rows of military aircraft, the rows of aircraft are using for the agriculture, for the cargo transportation, for um, the the operation in the uh, urban area, or for the uh, 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 demonstration, or uh, for even for the transportation of uh, passengers, or uh, uh, even in the uh, rural area. Okay. So all of these are uh, amended aircraft or, or, or the drones in, in the language. So the trend for the uh, uh, amended aviation or the whole aviation industry is, is that the aircraft is being more autonomous, digitalized, and more customized, and they will be even more smart in the future. So for the regulation of uh, amended aircraft, we have to mention two leading international organization. One is International Civil Aviation. The other one is JARAS. For the International Civil Aviation headquartered in uh, Montreal is a UN Special Agency on the Civil Aviation. In the ICAO, we have two group of experts are working on the regulation of uh, amended aircraft. One is the APAS panel. So uh, that is remote piloted aircraft system panel. And another one is the U.S. advisory group. So there are two approaches, two groups of experts. The APAS panel is working on the uh, international, uh, uh, rec uh, international operation of aircraft flying in the controlled airspace or the controlled aerodrome. So you see, we have, we have, a, we have a very limited scope of a business for the for the APAS panel. And the the approach 
of the upper panel is uh, very simple. It is just trying to transplant the regulation of a mandate aircraft in the AMD version. So all of the aircraft needed to be certified. The, the pilot needed to have a pilot license. The operator needed to have uh, uh, um, AOC, which means uh, uh, the certificate of operator as uh, 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 for the operation of an aircraft. So they will have to gather the ATC clearance for their uh, uh, flight. So this is a uh, RPAS panel, which is a fully regulatory approach. There are uh, not quite a big difference between the managed version and the unmanaged version. So, but still, because we don't have a pilot on board, uh, we have to revise all of the 18 to 19 uh, annex to the Chicago Convention. On this screen, you may find that except Annex 5, all the other annex will be revised by the RPAS panel. So uh, that is the uh, RPAS panel of uh, uh, family photo. We are uh, working uh, together with the other panels because uh, 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 without the pilots on board, the operation scenario is quite uh, uh, different. So we needed to coordinate with the other panels like uh, the frequency, like the airports, like uh, the communication, surveillance, et cetera. Uh, we also have a legal committee. They are uh, working on the legal regulatory of amended aircraft, but uh, the, uh, it, what product will come out from uh, the legal committee is not clear. We put uh, the amended uh, aircraft uh, regulatory work into the agenda of the legal committee, but uh, due to now, we don't have any uh, uh, fundamental or material uh, progress yet. Uh, okay, I will skip this, but for the another group of experts in ICAO is the UAS advisory group. Uh, for the UAS advisory group, you have to pay attention to the name. Uh, for the APAS, it's a panel. For the UAS advisory group, we call advisory group. Advisory group are not working on normally the subs. Uh, in the IQ language, SUPS means standard and the recommended practice. For the standard, it is legally binding to all the member states. Well, for the US AG, we are only working on the framework or the guidance, which is not legal binding to the member state. You may, you may follow or you may decide to partially follow, or you may decide not to follow none of the rules of guidance or the framework, which is the product of the US advisory group. Uh, well, for the um, reiteration of the drones or the uh, unmanned aircraft or the uh, manned aircraft, the ICAO secretary tried to establish the aircraft restoration network uh, they wanted to integrate it, all the restoration work of a managed version and managed version. Uh, on the screen, you may find that they even use the drone restoration on the website of ICAO. But unfortunately, even the ICAO does not have a clear definition of a drone. We have uh, the definition of APAS. We have the definition, which is ICAO definition of aircraft, but we don't have a definition of the drone. So that is why the official name of the restoration network is aircraft restoration network. Well, in the uh, US AG, since uh, we are only working on the framework or the guidance, the top uh, priority is the traffic management. So the first uh, uh, deliverable of the U.S. advisory group is the UTM, a common framework with core boundaries for global harmonization, which has uh, does not have a, cle a very close connection with uh, the case that you will have to uh, uh, cover in the moot court. In the Asia Pacific, we set up the U.S task force, we are working on the guidance material for the integration of unmanned aviation aircraft into the airspace. So that is, uh, but we are still quite focusing on the traffic management perspective, not the restoration, not the pilot license, or not the license of uh, unmanned aircraft. Well, um, in, uh, in, in simple, for the regulation of ICAO, 
the principle is that they are trying to follow the operation-centric, risk-based approach, but it is not uh, uh, fully uh, implemented by the panel because the panel is struggling from the managed aviation uh, regulation to the unmanaged version. We are still uh, uh, kidnapped by the thinking of managed aviation. We are still trying to uh, gave a TAP certification, gave a license, gave uh, uh, approval to different uh, operators, pilots, aircraft, and their uh, operation. So uh, I, I, I think in the future, IQ may change more to be the principle that we have declared operation-centric and risk approach. Now let's come to the uh, another leading international organization is JARAS. JARAS means Joint Authority for Role Making uh, and Manage the System. So this is a group of experts from uh, 67 countries representing different national aviation authorities or the regional uh, aviation authorities. We are recommending the technical uh, and operational requirements for the integration of amana aviation in the airspace and aerodrome. So we are not just uh, the experts from uh, the aviation uh, uh, authority. We also bring in roles of industry representatives. In the JARAS, we call them SCB in the history, which means stakeholder consultation body. And now they evolve to the new version, which is industry stakeholder body. So the academia is also invited. This is a member, uh, the list of the members of JARAS. So you, you may see that uh, uh, it covers the different regions of the world. Uh, in the history, we have seven different working groups uh, in the JARAS, but now we only have four working groups, uh, which is uh, operation, organization, personnel, awareness, safety risk management, and autonomous concept. So these uh, JARAS deliverables are on the JARAS website. If you may have an interest or you may think that it may have a connection with the case you have to deal with in the uh, arbitration, uh, you may uh, uh, go to the, uh, the JARAS website. So uh, in the JARAS, we are giving categorization of the operation of unmanned aircraft, not, not the, the uh, uh, aircraft. So be careful. This is the categorization of a manned aviation operation. It is not A category aircraft. It is A category operation, B category op operation, or the C category of operation. Uh, for the JARUS uh, publication, I will escape. Uh, I will share the slides so that you may read it later. Uh, okay, so, okay. This is uh, the U.S. operation classification, and you may follow this roadmap to, to know which regulation and which roles you may have to follow. Uh, if you are an operator, uh, you want to fly your amended aviation in the JARA's roles applied country. So uh, in the history, the manned aviation is, uh, is quite a license and certification based. So you have pilot license, operation approval, ATM uh, clearance, operator uh, uh, um, uh, approval, and aircraft type certification. And in the JARA's uh, philosophy, we are introducing the holistic operation-centric and the risk-based. So without, without all of the uh, certification or the approval in the traditional regulatory framework, you still make possible to make your operation uh, 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 legally in one uh, uh, country or in one uh, region. So this is uh, the uh, um, general picture of a three categorization of uh, amman aviation operations. So we have uh, a category in the EU language that is the open category, which is, means they are low risk. So we don't need to bring in the civil aviation authority. Let them buy and the fly. Let them fly without any in, uh, uh, intervention of a civil aviation authority. On the right, in the red color, that is certified or the C category, which means the risk of operation is high. They need to follow almost all of aspects of uh, managed aviation. So they need a license, they need approval, and uh, 
in the middle, that is a yellow color. You say rows of color are like the traffic lights. For the B category, uh, it's a specific category. The race is higher than A category, but it's lower than C category. So we needed to know the risk. So how to evaluate the risk of such operation? We introduce the specific risk assessment methodology we call SORA in the Java language. So first we evaluate the, the, uh, uh, the risk and to know the level of a risk based on the risk of the operation, we will uh, uh, introduce different level of a regulatory requirement. So in the B category, it is um, quite, uh, 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 specific, it, it is quite risk specified, and uh, uh, it is it, it needed more uh, coordination between the industry and the regulatory bodies. So, B category, we produce the SORA package. So, you have a, a, a full package of uh, a regulatory and, uh, and the regulatory compliance tools for the regulators and also for the operators. So this is uh, uh, the three category of operation in the Jarvis language and how that you may apply the roles. For the interaction between ICAO and Jarvis, you may read it later. And I just wanted to uh, mention that in some of uh, the, the countries, they may have a characterization of amended aircraft based on the weight of the aircraft. They have a macro category, lat category, small category, middle category, and a large category. So for different category, they also have a different level of regulation, but I didn't find uh, the, 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 um, uh, the logic of such a regulation uh, uh, methodology. Uh, whether you will introduce such a methodology in your case analysis, I don't know, but uh, you may, you know, you, uh, just for your reference uh, to know that in, in some countries, uh, they also have a category of uh, aircraft based on the weight of unmanned aircraft. Um, some countries may have an even simple version, just the macro lights and the regulated. So this one is even confusing based on my understanding. Uh, well, I know uh, the the um, mission for me is that it gave you uh, 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 the answer whether drone is aircraft. What I can tell you is drone is drone, and whether drone is aircraft is not clear. So it will be based on your understanding, your definition of aircraft and which category or the, the, the uh, uh, specification of the, the aircraft or the drone that you are discussing in your case. Uh, okay, I think that is uh, um, my presentation part. Uh, I will in introduce uh, Joanna to answer those of questions that you have shared with, uh, with us so that I will not um, uh, interfere the answer from Joanna because she is from an industry perspective. After you receive the answer from Joanna, I will bring my answer for uh, each of the questions that you have sent it to me. Okay, Joanna, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, just, um, Professor, just uh, send us some questions and uh, uh, I just uh, write it down and uh, I'll give you a simple. Uh, Professor Liu, could you just uh, give me the um, share screen power? You uh, have the I share screen power. Okay, okay. Let me just uh, share. Okay, can you uh, see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, the first question is, uh, is there any difference between drone and airline, uh, airplane? Um, I think uh, I could just uh, find this definition from the EU regulation. So 
um, you can see the um, drone means any aircraft operating or designed to operate autonomous or be piloted remotely without a pilot on board. I think the um, the essential difference is that whether there is a pilot on board. So um, for us, we think um, if there is no one on the on board to just uh, operate the drone, uh, so sorry to operate the aircraft, that we think it's a drone. And uh, if you if you ask um, if there are any um, uh, sim similarities or uh, some um, same thing between drone and the airplane, I think basically they are regarded as aircraft and uh, for the technology side and uh, for the um, design side, you can just uh, share different um, or the same technologies. So some technologies using on the airplane could also be used on the drone. And uh, the um, structure is also the same. Like we have the fixed wing and we have the uh, multi-rotor wing that could be um, both on the drone and the airplane. So um, let's do this. If um, when I just uh, um, asking the question, uh, sorry, when I just answer the, the questions, if you have any um, for the more questions, you can just uh, um, put your hands up and uh, just uh, ask me, okay? So if there is no, let's just uh, put the second one. Um, what are the current practices with regard to uh, registration? So there is two types of regist registration uh, according to the regulations in different country. Um, first type is you just register the pilot only, like uh, we do it in Europe. And the second is the pilot and the drone. We do it in China and uh, um, also I think in US means that um, the pilot first just register and then um, you also need to register which Zoom you have. So the Zoom and the pilot could be binding. And like if uh, somebody just see your Zoom and uh, they can know um, whose Zoom is it. And the second is uh, what regulations are currently enforced to regulate by sale and the use of drones. Okay, um, if we're talking uh, it in uh, international level, like if we want to export some product into um, maybe we say France, um, the product market access, access certification is the first one we need to do. Like uh, we regard drones like a radio product and also an ICT product. So we need to get the radio certification, the ICT uh, certification, and also like battery certification. So it's the first uh, we need to do to make the drone into the market. And after that, in a domestic market, so uh, when you just buy or sell it, there is basically no limitation. But when you want to use the drone, you need to um, you, you need to just uh, do it according to the civil aviation authorities regulation. Um, basically, there is some uh, regulation from the CAA, and uh, it's basically the same. Even it's uh, country specific, but I think basically the regulations are very similar. Like you need to uh, register your drone. Uh, when it weighs more than 250 gram, and also like you cannot fly your drone um, higher than uh, 400 feet, something like that. Um, and what is the most controlled via radio and GPS? Okay. Uh, this is very uh, interesting because it's very simple, the function of drone communication needs to be completed by two parts. One is the transmitter and the other one is the receiver. So uh, the control stick on the remote control is converted into radio waves and sent it to the receiver. 
And when the receiver reads the rating uh, for the control stick on the remote control by the receiving radio waves, it could be controlled by the remote controller. So, um, for example, DJI's drone have we uh, we have our own wireless communication protocols. Um, it's called OQThink3 technology. And the GPS is um, basically not for control. GPS is <clears throat> mainly used for the uh, positioning of drones. You can find the, your drones location using the GPS. And the next one, what is the remote control by satellite link? Okay, so um, after I just uh, explained the uh, control way of the drones, actually we regard the um, satellite as a, as a relay station. So the remote control station just to transmit the signal to the satellite and the, when the satellite receive it, it could send it to the aircraft so that we can just link this um, remote controller station uh, and the drones just together. And uh, what is the meaning of the line of sight? I think uh, actually it's called a visual line of sight. Um, the visual line of sight means that you can just uh, using your drone in the whole flying mission and you can just use your eyes, naked eyes to see your drones without any additional aid. Like you cannot use like um, binoculars or some FPV goggles. You can just um, put the um, glasses is okay. Uh, and uh, there is also called bivillas, means beyond the villas. So that you can just uh, operate your drone uh, outside of your visual light. And there is also uh, one called e -velos. It means expand velos. So um, when we do some um, specific mission, like uh, when we do some um, company or some, uh, like we, like we uh, just uh, want to just, uh, let, let's see, let's see this. Uh, actually, uh, we just uh, use our drones to make some uh, industry mission. Like we just uh, uh, see the weather there is good uh, for, uh, for the electric station. So we want to just uh, fly a really, really long distance and we cannot see the drone and it's called Bivilos or sometimes Evilos. And the next one, um, what is dispatch reliability and what is use? Um, actually, uh, on the small drones, we just uh, no need to use this kind of um, dispatch reliability. But if there is some automatic uh, operation, so, um, it means the percentage of scheduled departure that do not incur a delay, cancellation, turnback, or division. Basically, it's on the manned aircraft, especially for the uh, airplanes and the airports. So uh, I think maybe in the future, um, uh, when germs or UAS just become bigger and bigger, and uh, there is also the vertical port for the UAS to use. So maybe in the future, the dispatch reliability is also just a fit for the drones. Um, what type of engines are used? You can see this is the DJI um, 300. Um, I just, I just uh, um, see what I know. And uh, DJI's drone just uh, use motors. You can see um, there is four arms and also for motors and uh, also for routers. The motors just uh, um, to give the propulsion power and uh, uh, to make the rotors just a uh, circle. And uh, after that, the uh, drone just uh, can fly. 
So, okay, this one, which fields are used? Um, as I know, the field uh, used by drones generally, generally includes batteries, uh, gas line, and the solar energy. Basically, in the civil drones, the most drones just use batteries, um, which um, I think it depends on the configuration of the drone and the environment it, uh, which need to fly. So um, for example, in some high plateau areas, gas line is um, poor to efficiently combustion. So the battery is a better choice at, the, at this time. Um, you know, China is a, a very mountain. Uh, China just has a lot of mountains. So if we want to just uh, fly over the mountains, um, it need to uh, take off at a very high um, level. So uh, actually the battery is a better choice. And for some um, military use, the solar energy is better because it could just uh, offer the duration more. Uh, like <laughs> actually uh, I'm very interested in the uh, in, in a case uh, of this mode called time. So I just uh, uh, read all the materials and I found that the duration uh, of the uh, of the drone uh, in the material is ten hour. Uh, actually, I think the solar energy uh, could do this, but if you want to use the battery, uh, it's very challengeful. So. This is the answer for this question. Um, and uh, does June require runway to launch? Okay, I just uh, put three kind of June here. You can see the first one is a fixed wing June. So you can see there is four motors uh, and it can just uh, lift directly. It, it don't need to run away. And the second one is, uh, uh, sorry, the first one is a multi-rotor drone. And the second one is the fixed drone, a fixed wing drone. So um, due to it cannot just offer the lifting power directly. So it needs to just run away. And the last one is a composed rotor drone. So you can see there is um, multi-rotors and there are also fixed wing. So, uh, first, they, they it just uh, use the multi rotors to lift up, and then uh, use the fixed wing to um, do the flying. So <laughs> it just uh, depends on the different kind of drone. And uh, okay, how are the stability of drones measured? So there is a thing called uh, gyroscope. Um, it could just measure the rate of rotation and helps keeps the drone balanced. So I just find a, find a picture that you can just say it in detail. Actually, it has a very, very small sensor in the drone. So um, basically it could be uh, insert in a flight control. So um, maybe uh, also in some uh, flight controller, and you can just uh, DIY your drone. Okay, how high drone can go? <laughs> this is a very interest, um, interesting question because uh, from the technology side, it depends on the fuel and the proportion ability. But uh, there is also some safety considerations. So. Uh, let's just uh, take DJI's um, drone uh, as an example. For the consumer drones, uh, some small drones, we just uh, uh, limit the height to be 500 meters. Why we do that? Because um, there is a regulation requirement that the airplane basically just uh, fly at uh, at least six uh, six hundred meters from the obstacle of the 
earth surface. So we just uh, um, we just uh, need 100 meters to make the safety. And uh, how to know which type of job are good? This is also a very good question. Um, actually, we just have a uh, safety design and the reliability. The safety design, uh, there is a consideration, it's called redundancy. Like uh, if we make the drone, uh, it could be, there, there is a called the flight controller, but there is a, a main controller, master controller, always say, and there is also a slave, a slavery controller. So when the master controller just uh, maybe go wrong, and the second one could also work. And uh, um, like the redundancy also, for example, there is uh, IMU GPS um, and uh, uh, and the come uh, sorry. I just forgot how to say, but uh, the, cons uh, the consideration is that we just use different technology, but for a, for a one purpose to make the design safety and uh, um, for the reliability, we just need to test the drone. Like we need to test it in different temperature, um, especially for the high temperature and the very low temperature. And uh, we also need to uh, make it like some aging test. Like we just uh, um, put the drone into a room and uh, let it uh, just, uh, just 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 uh, work for like thousand uh, hours. And uh, also uh, some humid, uh, humid uh, test and also some vibrate test to make it a very uh, safe and reliability when we just uh, transport it. So uh, I think it's a very complex um, system and we also need to pass like some um, produce or manufacture, uh, how to say, it's, it's called ISO 9001. It's just uh, for the quality and uh, our factory just need to get the certificate of the quality. And the last one is how fast the technology in drills are changing. So um, let's just uh, take the civil drone technology as an uh, example. Um, and uh, in our company, we just uh, divide drones into three different kinds of like the consumer one, the industry one, and the agriculture one. So each different germs just have different technology way to develop. The consumer germs just are getting smaller and smaller, and the, and the more technology is just integrated in a very small germ. Um, we have the, 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 the uh, smallest germ is just the 80 gram. It's very, it's very small. Uh, and the industry drone just, uh, uh, just uh, do more automated and uh, uh, some uh, automatic application scenarios. And the agriculture drones are developing in the direction of safety and uh, environmental protection. So that's the basic situation. And uh, how many companies are? globally involved, involving. As I know, there is uh, 1,000 and more companies in China, which is uh, in, in this whole industry. And I think it could, could be more globally. And also I wish it could be more and more. So this industry could get bigger and bigger. Okay, this is my contact. Thank okay, you. Joanna, would you mind to go to the first page of your slides so that I would just use the slides you have prepared because uh, I don't need to present uh, the question one by one. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Joanna. Uh, well, 
my dear students and colleagues, is there any difference between drone and airplane? I don't know. It depends. It based on your definition of a drone, but an airplane. I think you are trying to use the word airplane. Airplane is one type of aircraft. Uh, so if the drone is uh, is uh, is um, one version of uh, aircraft, so it is just different type of uh, aircraft. So they may have a similarity. The top similarity is that they may flying in the airspace based on the in action, interaction with air but for the for the power for the uh, configuration and for the operation uh, uh, it is it is quite a different so it they, it is quite a, depend on your definition of a drone but uh, i i just want to let you be careful with the word of a drone drone does not necessary to be an aircraft. If you may check the, uh, you may Google the drone, you may find that we also have underwater machine. We also call them the drone. So drone is not necessary to be an aircraft. But uh, if you call drone an aircraft, generally speaking, generally speaking, drone means rows of aircraft have some percentage of autonomous operation function and without pilot or passenger on board. But the drone could be small, light, and could be big and uh, very heavy. So the drone is not clear. So what are the similarities and the difference between drone and an airplane? Okay, I have answered that already. Uh, Joanna, let's move to the second page. What are the current practice with regards to the restoration? Uh, for the restoration, we only have the restoration requirement, which is uh, international rules for the remote piloted aircraft system, which will be certified by the National Aviation Authority except rows of a certified remote piloted aircraft, we don't have any compulsory international rules for the restoration of the amended aircraft. So it varies based on, it varies uh, in different uh, national regulatory system. So this is my answer for the current practice of restoration. And what regulations are currently enforced to regulate buy, sell, and use of drones? Um, okay, we don't have any um, special requirement for the 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 buyers and the sellers whether you could buy or sell the drones or the aircraft. It is free. If you are a trader or you are operator, you could uh, buy. And sell the aircraft. So this is a, this is a um, free trade market. So if, especially for the National Aviation Authority, they are not a regulator of the trade market for the aircraft. For the use of drones, you are free. But whether your operation is legal or not, it is based on the requirement of the pilot license, operator approved uh, ATC operator uh, uh, certificate and the ATC uh, uh, clearance. So the re operation of the drone is free, but for the safe regulation, uh, you need to follow the civil aviation regulation in different countries. Are this regulation international or country specific? Uh, we only have international uh, regulation requirement for international operation. So that is a uh, region of, uh, or that is uh, the, the, the juris uh, uh, jurisdiction of the international civil aviation or, uh, organization. All the other operations is um, following uh, 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 within the jurisdiction of the National Aviation Authority. So only international operation will be regulated by the ICAO subs. 
For all the other operations, they only have to follow the national aviation regulations. Next uh, slide. What is the remote control via radio and a GPS or does it work? Uh, for the regulation purpose, we only care about the command and the control uh, uh, link. So the command and control means the connection between the amended aircraft or the remote pilot craft and the uh, uh, um, ground control station. So such radio link between the remote pilot aircraft and the ground station maintain the safe operation of the amended or the remote piloted aircraft. For the GPS, GPS is for the navigation purpose. So we don't have a very specific requirement for the GPS and the GPS is one way of, uh, it's just one of uh, the navigation uh, uh, solution. Uh, besides the GPS, we also have a uh, GLONASS, we have a Galileo, in, uh, we also have a Beidou system. So uh, the, we call, in the general language, we call Global Navigation Satellite System. So the GNSS is a functional for the navigation of the aircraft, whether it is manned or unmanned. Next slide. So what is the remote control by satellite link? Uh, what is the meaning of a line of a satellite? For the VLOS or the beyond uh, or the BVLOS or the extend or evil evil loss we don't need to discuss because the evil loss is not uh, necessary anymore we found that uh, the evil loss definition is not clear so currently we only have the terminology of a veloc bv loss and uh, rl uh, radio line of a set which means r uh, uh, in, in short is r v r l o s and b r l o s so for the definition of beyond the view line of the set or the view line of the set, uh, Joanna has uh, gave you our clear uh, uh, definition. So whether the command and control is uh, going through the satellite link, we call that is the satellite communication, or it's just the go uh, use the other radio communication frequency. Uh, we don't care, but you have to be reliable to meet the requirement of a C2 uh, link uh, 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 regulatory requirement. So we don't differentiate the set communication or the other way of a radio communication. We just, uh, from a regulatory perspective, we only care about the quality reliance of the radio communication between the remote pilot aircraft and ground control station. So next slide. The dispatcher is quite uh, operation centric. They are dispatch the aircraft, the flight crew based on the uh, slots uh, from the air navigation service provider or the civil aviation authority. Uh, the dispatcher's function or the dispatch function is not quite, uh, it's, it's more, it's more uh, management perspe perspective and it is more uh, efficiency perspective. It does not have a, a, a close connection with the safety requirement. And I don't think the dispatch reliability or the function has any connection with the, 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 the question of whether the, the uh, a drone is a aircraft, is a cargo or is a goods in the CSG or not. Let's move to the next slide. Um, for the types of engines, we have a different types of uh, engines. Rows of uh, the, the engines you have listed on the screen are uh, used for the amended aviation war already. We even may have some uh, drones or the amended aircraft. They don't have any engine on board. So that is why in the in the uh, table of uh, types of uh, aircraft, we even have no power or non-powered uh, aircraft. So 
engine, we may have different types of engines fit for the operation of uh, aircraft. We also have engine lace aircraft. Next slide. Uh, first, the drone or the aircraft does not necessary to have a fuse. So if they use fuse, uh, it will be depend on the inch of uh, the aircraft and how to uh, how to review that. Uh, I, I don't think this is uh, quite important for the even for the rec uh, safety regulatory purpose. We don't care. It is based on the design purpose and whether it may meet the re commercial or the efficiency management perspective of the operators and uh, the expectation from the market. Uh, next slide. Does drone require runway? It depends. So for rows of uh, um, aircraft need to uh, need to uh, use uh, the runway for the taking off and the landing. Yes, they need a runway, but we do have a big number of uh, uh, unmanned aircraft, and that's the beauty of uh, of uh, uh, unmanned aircraft. They don't need any runway. They just uh, they may be launched. They may be uh, they may, uh, from the ground with, uh, without any runway. So that is the convenience and that is the beauty uh, advantage brought by the amended version of the aircraft. Next slide. How are the stability of drones measured? So uh, uh, for the roles of uh, amended aircraft will be certified. The stability requirement will be uh, 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 describe in the safety regulatory requirement, normally in the in the uh, airworthiness certification requirement. For roles of um, amended aircraft, that's not necessary to be type certified. The requirement is uh, um, uh, is uh, more coming from the industry standard. Okay, next slide. How high drone can go? They could uh, go to the attitude that uh, we still have uh, atmosphere. So that means they could still derive a support from the interaction of the air. Uh, so maybe may go to uh, currently to uh, 50 or 60 kilometers. So from that the traditional airspace, even due to, to the near space, but for the uh, position or the legal position of the near space, whether it is a still airspace or not, it is not clearly defined by the ICAO and the UN WUSA, which is uh, the UN Special Agency on the Outer Space uh, Operation. It's not clear yet. Let's go to the next slide. How to know which type of the drone are good? uh you simple if it is a tap certificate it is reliable if it is not uh the tap needed to be tap certified you may check whether it has been uh, whether it may meet the requirement of industry standard so if it is a tap certificate if it is uh a uh, meet all the requirement of industry standard they are reliable they are good if not you may doubt the quality of uh, that amended aircraft or the drone. Next slide. How fast technology in drones are changing? I don't know how to uh, evaluate uh, the speed of the technology, but all of the technology in the in both the in aviation industry, in the communication uh, industry, in the in the navigation, so different experts of a technology may be introduced and uh, applied in the amount of aviation will have their impact for the uh, technology evolving of amount of aviation but i don't know how to evaluate the speed of the technology next slide how many companies I don't know the accurate number. So uh, the number uh, Joanna have shown you uh, uh, in China, uh, she comes from an industry perspective. 
I think that is uh, the number based on uh, her uh, calculation. Globally, we don't know the number, but it is uh, more than 10,000. And no one knows the accurate number of companies who are working on the manufacturing of amended aircraft. Next slide. Okay, so this is the contact details for God, Joanna. Uh, you Hi. may uh, uh, take a, a screen uh, shot so that you may contact Joanna later. Okay, okay. Uh, I also found uh, two uh, yeah, questions two from the chat. Uh, the first one is, is there any compulsory obligation for the restoration of a drone which is operated by state-owned entities? Okay, so the rec restoration requirement is only applicable to civil aircraft. So for the state-owned uh, entities, uh, roads of aircraft used by the state entities, especially for the for the for the military, for the police, or for the customers, uh, they we call roads of aircraft as a state aircraft. Whether state aircraft needed to be registered, it varies. So we only have uh, we only have a registration requirement for the type certificate amended aircraft for the state owned or the state aircraft. We don't have uh, we don't have compulsory obligation, uh, but uh, the state aircraft needed to be marked so that as you know this is this amended version of aircraft is a state aircraft so that they may enjoy the privilege and immunity of uh, 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 based on their uh, based on uh, their legal position. Well, uh, the second question is that what is the global regulatory on the privacy violation owing to drones? Uh, different countries have a different privacy or uh, uh, regulatory system. Uh, it does not uh, have a connection with the drones. So it is all of the privacy law and the regulation are applicable to drones operations. So you don't necessarily to care about whether it's drone or not. Uh, so the privacy law and the regulation apply to all the drone operations. Okay, that is all of my answer to the 14 questions you have raised together with the two additional questions we have received from uh, the, the uh, chat function of Zoom. Uh, we are ready to answer any new questions. First of all, thank you, Professor Liu Hao and uh, Joanna for giving a regulatory as well as the industry side of like, you know, the things about the drones. I I'm sure, uh, we have to replay this video later on to understand so many things. There are so many acronyms, so many things. But the beauty of uh, uh, this competition is that, or this competition, is that every year there is something new. Something new uh, comes in. And uh, at the start, people have no idea, no knowledge about it. So this year, the drone is involved. So uh, with your help, like most of the students, definitely, and even uh, we have learned so many things from you, and we will learn even more on that one. Um, so yes, uh, it's, it's a good uh, lecture on, um, on space law, air law, aircraft, drones, and so many things, which many of us have not studied in our law school or even not studying now, but your short lecture has really given them very good idea about it. And thank you for uh, uh, dealing with those questions in advance, uh, like, you know, and very clearly answered. Um, of course, our our idea is not to help a students to to develop their like you know teach them how what to move. It's about giving them similar knowledge and uh, understanding about the things which um, which is necessary for everybody to know. So this will be the new knowledge for them and for us. So thank you very much for your time and everything. So Mahek, is there any um, time left for the question or to invite question? No, we can take questions if anyone has questions or you can raise your hand or you can type it out in the chat box. And I'm sure the speakers have already said that they will share their uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. And uh, Professor Liu Hao and Jonna, we, we also um, have recorded this lecture and for the benefit of everyone, everyone, uh, we upload it on the website where from our the moot website so that anybody and everybody from around the world they can understand and i think it's the first time they will learn something about drone and uh, aerospace uh, hopefully some of these uh, young lawyers in future or your student can become the uh, dispute resolution expert related to drones 
in future. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Hao and Joanna. Uh, I'm sure drones is a... Okay, there is one more question. Could you elaborate more on use of drones? This is a very broad question, but I think... Uh, uh, Professor, uh, would you like to take this question? Uh, Joanna, okay. do you have... Uh, you, uh, you wanted to take the floor first? Yeah, Joanna, you should tell us from the industry perspective, how many types of drones your company is making. And by the way, everyone listening here, DG is, uh, has been, um, uh, according to the search, I found that DG is number one drone manufacturer in the world that has been given the rank last year. So Joanna, you tell us which kind of drone you make, your company make. Um, okay, so um, we are a civil drone company and uh, uh, from the... Uh, the, the initial part, we just uh, want to, uh, you, you know, there is uh, some uh, aircraft, uh, it's called model aircraft, and it could not just uh, um, hovering by itself, and it need to, um, the man just always push the uh, control sticker, and if you do nothing, the aircraft just uh, drop off. So, <laughs> so, um uh the the initial purpose for our company is to make a, a drone that just uh, can fly itself so uh, we just uh, made the first one uh it called uh, uh, uh it's called the phantom i think uh, maybe <laughs> maybe you, you can just uh, check on the website and uh, uh, after that we just uh, uh, add our cameras on the aircraft to make everybody can just uh, um, see the words from, uh, let's say, God vision. So, so we can just uh, um, see the words like a bird. And then um, we just uh, make it smaller and we uh, just uh, develop the Mavic series and uh, uh, it could be fold. And it could just uh, as a um, water tap so it's very small. Oh, sorry, it's like a, a cup, water cup, you know that. Um, and uh, uh, we just uh, want the drones could be smaller and smaller, but the technology is powerful and powerful. So um, we can just uh, uh, use the new technologies to help people to make more uh, entertainment. And uh, the second part for us, it's called industry or we call it enterprise room. Enterprise rooms just help people to do the difficult things. Like we need to um, check the electric line, uh, maybe on some area that there is no people there and uh, it's uh, very dangerous and uh, people just uh, need to climb up and to check the electric line. And uh, we just uh, use drones to, to instead of the people. And uh, also um, we just uh, like to use uh, the drones to check like some highway uh, to check the uh, airplane to see whether there is a, a broken damage or something like that. So we just uh, um, want our drones to do things that uh, safer uh, just to make people safety and uh, drone just instead of people and uh, um, the second the, the sorry the third part is for the agricultural drone agricultural drone just uh, uh, i know india is a very big agricultural country and i think there is also some farmers they just uh, spray the uh, chemical things just uh, by themselves uh, I just uh, saw uh, some Chinese farmers. Um, previous, pre previously, they just uh, use, uh, they, they just uh, take a, like, it's like a chemical bag and use it to spray the chemical uh, pesticide. But uh, uh, recently in China, they just uh, um, learned to use the drone and to spray. So the advantage is that they don't need to go into the field. They just stand outside the field and to make the drone to instead to do the spray. 
and also they don't need to contact with the chemical pesticide, so they are safer. And also the efficiency is uh, much more better. We can just uh, use the one agricultural drone to work one hour, and we can just uh, finish like 350 acres, I think. So it's um, it's more efficient um, compared with the uh, manned uh, working. And also it's better for the environment because we use uh, less water and we just uh, reduce the release of the carbon. So that's, um, I think, the basically use of germs. And also um, we can just uh, do some, I think it's very some, cool things using the drone, like um, when we just uh, protect the animals, like the whales, um, you know, we cannot know how the whales, uh, whether it's health, uh, health or not, because we need to get the um, body liquid from the whale. So we just uh, use a drone and to link a very small cup when it just uh, breathes, uh, uh, out of the water, and we, we just uh, use drones to get a top uh, a cup of the uh, body liquid of the whale, and then we just uh, send it to the laboratory to analyze whether it is health or not. So I think it's um it's the drone just to make a tool to to give you uh, another way to think whether you can use drone to do what things actually it's depend on you. So more and more people just join us and they just use the drone, maybe do something that we can, we, we, we just uh, um, ever imagine. So I think that's the, that's the point um, for the industries. Uh, and I think it's very cool, yeah. Very good, very good. So it's very good to know that uh, types of drone, particularly for the agricultural use. In the in the future, if I have to use drone, I will use it for shopping and carrying my shopping bag. That will be much better for me. <laughs> okay, Rajesh, uh, for the use of a drone, uh, I have nothing to add. But uh, from a, a civil aviation authorities a regulatory perspective, we don't care about the use of uh, drones. What purpose? We don't care. We just care about whether operation is safe or not. We don't want uh, you endanger the people and the property on the ground and the other aircraft, which is flying in the air. So we only care about operation safety. For the use of a uh, uh, drone, we don't care from uh, uh, civil aviation authorities' perspective. Well, I have uh, two more questions from uh, the chat function. Uh, for the first one, let's see the arbitration tribunal made an award where the interpretation of a questionable term contradicts a law of a country where this award must be enforced. Would that award be de denied to be enforced due to its legal improperness? Yes, if you misinterpret uh, interpret the definition of the doom in that specific country, you needed to enforce the award. Yes, it may be denied because of a misinterpretation of uh, the, the aircraft or the drone in that country. So the second question is that, that if a drone is classified as uh, an aircraft in a state based on its own regulation, is that classification valid? Yes, the classification of aircraft valid because this is uh, international accepted classification of an aircraft. If the drone is aircraft, yes, that classification is valid. Uh, another one, the other design requirements for safety, are there any international requirements on how aircraft are built? For example, ESO standard, et cetera, on how aircraft should be designed, et cetera. We have a uh, type certification uh, regulatory requirement. We also have uh, international standard, like the ISO standard. Rules of standards um, will define the different requirements for the, for the design, manufacturing, operation, and maintenance 
of aircraft. It is not just uh, the the uh, the build. So the build in our language, it is uh, it is manufacturing. So that is my answer to that question. Another one is that. Uh, can you please repeat the name of the most important international regulation on the drones? Uh, the name of the most important international regulation. I don't know which one is the most international uh, regulation because um, okay. So for the for the for the uh, RPAS, uh, all the nineteen annex are applicable to the uh, to the upas for rows of uh, um, uh, 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 all the other I mean, aircraft are following within the jurisdiction of a national aviation authority that is a national uh, regulatory uh, uh, instruments are applicable valid for the regulation of the drones so we don't know which one is the most important all of them are important it based on whether your uh, definition of the drone is the following within the jurisdiction of the last that legal instrument over <laughs> thank you thank you Meg. i think it's uh, time now to close yes. all right uh, thank you so much sir uh, if you have any question uh, a professor has dropped his email id also you can email if there's anything that is remaining it was indeed a wonderful session and i believe uh, the topic was little technical and uh, both of you just uh, made it very clear for us. Maybe we'll have to watch it again, as uh, Professor uh, Sharma said. But thank you so much for uh, taking out your valuable time. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And thank you to the participants for being here. And uh, one more thing. Is yes, that we, yes, Rijash and uh, Mahak. Before we close, I just have one last uh, uh, advice or reminding to our student for your moot uh, arbitration. Drone is not clear. We don't have any international accepted uh, definition of the drone. So you may have your own version of a definition of your drone that I may suit for your position in the moot. <laughs> and for both to both of you, we want to wish you Happy Chinese New Year, which is very close. Thank you. Thank you very much for changing your time into your plan of traveling for this webinar. We really appreciate that. So wish you a very happy, healthy, and prosperous Chinese New Year to you. Happy New Year. Same to all of our colleagues and students. Happy Chinese New Year, and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah, bye. bye.